You are listening to Let's Talk Trio on podcast. Make sure you're following us on all of our social media accounts. Thank you all for tuning in for another episode of Let's Talk Trio. In this episode, we are at the Trio Day event in Denver, Colorado, near the Capitol at the Wells Fargo Center. We had plenty of students come by the podcast to share their stories of perseverance and determination. A huge, huge thank you to the Colorado chapter of Aspire for inviting us to cover their event. It was very inspiring to watch a lot of students come by. They were talking about their journey uh, through the Trio program and the importance of attaining a post-secondary education or aspiring to a uh, attend a college and a lot of these students are talking about uh, being able to do all of this through the TRIO program. So the TRIO community again keeps showing why these TRIO programs are important. Um, a little bit of a, a, a note, I do want to acknowledge that politically uh, the current administration wants to reduce the TRIO programs by about 13%. We'd like for our audience to reach out to congressional representatives and let them know how much TRIO means to you. So again, in this podcast, we have the students from various TRIO programs across the great state of Colorado. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our Patreon sponsor, Brian Gray. Thank you so much for your sponsorship. Uh, we appreciate you and thank you for helping us keep this momentum going for our podcast. We truly do appreciate you. You can find us on our Patreon page and you can sponsor Let's Talk Trio. There are various levels of tier donation and uh, each each one with a different perk. So Brian will get for for February and March will be recognized in our podcast and we will con- keep uh, continue recognizing him for the duration of his donation. If you would like to be featured on Let's Talk Trio, please find us on Facebook. You can now do a direct message to us through our Facebook page and let us know if you'd like for our podcast to come by to your institution. The month of March and April are already super busy for us, uh, but go ahead and send on those requests. We'll fit you into our schedule. March is going to be crazy. We have a lot of commitments to, one, interview students and staff at Colorado State University and across Colorado. So we are just floored with all the requests that we're getting, and we are excited to come to your institution. On February 25th, the Let's Talk Trio podcast will be at the Trio House to celebrate Trio Day for Colorado State University. Again, thank you all so much for listening. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. Broadcasting live from the Wells Fargo Center in Denver, Colorado, you're listening to Let's Talk Trio on podcast. Hi. Hi. You're the, the first one? I am the first one. My name is Juan. Carlos. Carlos, nice to meet you. Nice to meet Come you. on in. Yeah, for sure. So we are being joined by Carlos. Carlos, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and like how did you get involved with TRIO? All right, um, so my name, first of all, my name is Carlos Guillen. I am a student at University of Colorado Denver, and I am a science and psychology major. So that just entails I am a bachelor, get my bachelor's in neuroscience. Um, how I got involved in TRIO was through talent search through my middle school. i uh, been part of it, been on multiple countless college visits and I knew higher education was in my future so I kind of wanted to explore that and I continued that on to my collegiate career right on and uh, I'm part of TRIO I'm a, I'm a TRIO McNair scholar I've been funded to represent my undergrad research at multiple institutions Brown University University of New Mexico I presented at Sockwitz wow. yeah and it's uh, so many opportunities open to TRIO and I'm so grateful for it um, and I'm also a, a peer mentor at Trio SSS as well. Right on. So I'm That's very awesome. involved in Trio. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a Trio baby. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. So so what got you into Trio? Like, what was the thing that drew you to Trio? <laughs> I think I think what really drew me into Trio was the was the, Make you the cluster of identities that were associated with it. Yeah. And people who were associated with the same communities as I was, low income, you know, was uh, socially economically like disadvantaged. And I wanted to be surrounded myself with those people, but at the same time, motivate each other to do better. Absolutely. To to pursue a career that we uh, pursue, uh, uh, identity of ourselves that weren't that wasn't given to us when we at birth. Yeah. You know, so kind of like to try to defeat the statistic at some point. So. Right on. Yeah. And now that you've been through the trio program and you're pursuing, it seems like you're really p- pursuing your passions. Yes, sir. Um, how does that feel to be on this end of like? Are you defining success at this point, or how, how, how would you define? I am. I'm slowly defining success. I'm, okay. I really am. I'm slowly defining success, and I'm, you know, feel like I'm embodying it, embodying it as well. Like I'm That's trying amazing. to take form of it. 
because of who's motivating me. The staff at uh, University of Colorado Denver at, at the trail office is magnificent. When you when you at, when you at your low, they pick you up. So yeah. it's like that's absolutely having that having that community and sense of unity is very helpful. Um, but it's it's unbelievable, man. Like yeah. It's I I have so many opportunities. Um, I have a goal, and that one goal is get a PhD. And after that, I'm getting my PhD. Post- right yeah, on, I'm, man. Yeah, I'm That's my awesome. PhD. I'm getting my postdoc, and after that, I'm gonna go find something new to go get my master's or PhD. And so it's like it's a never-ending process for me. It, Education is my passion. Absolutely. That's the awesome. The trio made me realize that for that's, sure. That's amazing. So how do you find the energy to keep going? Where where does that motivation and the influence come from? So it's definitely counting the, counting the small wins, count, uh, taking, uh, recognizing the small goals I set for myself that makes me, that reminds myself what the goal is and interacting with people who were in my position and interacting with people who been in that, my position. So I'm really taking account of the relationships that I find myself in yeah. and gaining and absorbing as much information as I can. And I see the adversity of what people go through and I use that to motivate myself That's as amazing. well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely counting small wins Absolutely. and very, very active in my community. When we talk about TRIO, we typically refer to access. So why why are TRIO programs important? TRIO programs are important because for an individual like myself that comes from a low-income uh, area and when going to public school that wasn't well, well funded, um, going to school, completing high school and getting a high school diploma was about it. Yeah. That was the goal. That was the aspiration, right? Like the, that exactly. was kind of like the standard for a lot of students. Yeah, exactly. But you, you excelled that. I excelled that and more. So it's just like TRIO opens the avenues for so many opportunities, especially educationally, educationally professionally, and personally. Absolutely. So it's like, it's, I, I feel like it goes under the radar sometimes, but for me, it's a, it's a privilege. Yeah. It's a privilege to be part of TRIO. So. Right on. So what would be some words of wisdom that you would want to share with the TRIO student that may be listening or even to staff members that may be listening to the podcast right now? Uh, I feel like this is my mantra, man. Um, yeah, go for it. This is my mantra, and I always live by it. And every day, I always remind myself that life is a marathon. Everything we go through is a marathon. Uh, it's not a race. So trust the process. Continue the process. Show that hard work. And, you know, the law of attraction is real. Whatever you put in this world, you will get out. That's amazing. Yes, sir. Carlos, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Appreciate we appreciate you. you. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. How are you doing? I'm good. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Um, so what is your name and what uh, TRIO program is serving you? Uh, my name is DeAndre Tupoy. I'm serving the TRIO program at Public Community College. Public Community College, right on. So welcome to the podcast. What, uh, so how did you get into TRIO? How did you learn about TRIO? Well, how I learned about TRIO is actually through another program that I did. Um, uh-huh. I was in the AVID program, and then my teacher recommended me, and she told me, yeah, there's this really cool program called TRIO that will help you throughout high school. And I I signed up for it, and yeah. I had my interview, and it, it sounded like something I really wanted to do. That's awesome. So what was uh, some of the inspiration of, like, what is it that you want to do career-wise? Uh, what I want to do is I want to be a software developer. A software developer. Yes. What What was the inspiration behind that? Uh, I just really like the way that like apps and things work and like yeah. games and stuff. Uh-huh. And I just think it's really interesting, like how you'll put in code into something and then it'll appear like on a screen. Right on. And with that training of becoming a program developer or a software developer. Uh, what type of education have you already received? Like, did you get that in, informally, or do you do you already have a little bit of background behind that? Well, I, I do concurrent enrollment, so I'm uh, I'm taking uh, college classes while I'm still in high school right now. Okay. And uh, I'm a CIS major, so I'm I'm actually in college learning about it right now. Wow! So doing concurrent enrollment, you're do, you're doing high school and you're doing college at the same time. Yeah. That must be a, an amazing experience. Yeah. And with that, do you feel like more and more you're liking the path that you're in oh definitely because uh, like trios helped me out with like a lot of my college stuff and like uh, helping me like organizing everything so that i'm like just smooth sailing right on yeah. when you say that trios helping you in what ways have they helped you in what ways like I, when i started concurrent enrollment they, what i wasn't told yet is that like there's a like 
well, the district pays uh, for my tuition. I still have to pay for like the fees and the books and the stuff. So Trio uh, helped me with that and informed me about that, so that uh, I could I, I could get a job and then figure out a way to pay for all this. That's awesome. So they've figured uh, ways for you to get resources and yeah. get the assistance that you need. Yeah. Uh, what does Trio mean to you? Uh, Trio honestly means a lot to me. Like. I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today without Trio. Like, I probably wouldn't be doing concurrent enrollment mm -hmm. because I wouldn't have, like, that support system. Uh, like, like whenever I need something, I can just go to my advisors for helper, and they'll give me all the information that they can on the subject. That's amazing. And what is, from, from here, where do you see yourself going? I know you said that eventually you'd like to develop apps and do yeah. all that, but where do you see yourself in five to ten years? In five to ten years, I would see myself, since I'm already doing concurrent enrollment, so I would be out of college and trying to like get into the field more. Right on. Uh, any particular college that you want to attend? Uh, probably uh, CSU Fort Collins or UCCS. All right, right on. Uh, what's some word of advice that you have for a student that is maybe looking up and saying, you know what, I want to try concurrent enrollment or I want to try TRIO. What do I need to do to get involved? Well, what I would say to get involved is definitely uh, just sign up as soon as possible and try to get into TRIO as soon as possible, if, as soon as there's opening slots. And with concurrent enrollment, you have to you have to really organize your stuff. Like you have to get all of your AccuPlacer scores and all kinds of stuff to make sh ensure you that you're college ready and that you can actually take college classes and start uh, and start getting credit. Awesome. It, looking at Trio as the organization that, that serves you, yeah. who has uh, been a major influence um, getting you the, up to this point? Probably a, a major influence is probably one of my advisors, John Wooten. Okay. Uh, he's, he's my advisor. Uh, anything I need, he really has a lot of information. He's been doing this for a while. So. Right on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We're here live at the Wells Fargo Center. We are taking student interviews, and we're talking with students about their experiences with TRIO. Hi. My name is Juan Rivas. Talon, nice to meet you. So I see you're with the Upper Bound Program. Uh, what, uh, par what Upper Bound Program are you with? CSU Pueblo. CSU Pueblo, right on. Uh, how did you get involved with the TRIO program? Um, how I got involved was I used to be a part of this program called My Life in 8th Grade. Uh -huh. And one of the last few days, uh, the Upper Bound programs came and talked about it. And then I was able to talk to my counselor and I was able to find out that uh, what TRIO was or like what the Upper Bound program was. So. Awesome. Uh, what spoke to you about TRIO? Like, what, are you, what did you really like? I really liked the help that they give me, um, the, like, the backbone of how I've been able to get where I am today is the main thing that I like about the Right on. And so I hear you saying that it got you up to this point so far. With what skills, what, what were you learning, or what are some things that, you, that helped you pick up to, to get to this point? Um, definitely just being able to um, take classes, being able to learn about college because only two people in my family have went to college and so it was just one of those things where I just was like, oh, I'm not going to go to college because of that. But when I found them, it was able to show me that I could do whatever I was able to be capable of. Right on. And currently being in the TRIO programs, are you looking at certain careers already or are you thinking ahead about what colleges you might be wanting to go to? Uh, yeah, I'm actually a senior, so I'll be graduating this year. Congratulations, yeah. Um, and I am picking between two colleges to go for theatrical production, and I'm thinking Ooh. teaching. Teaching. So what led to that? What, what inspired you to possibly do, like, theater and teaching? Um, definitely because of my teachers. Uh, my old fifth grade teacher really put into, like, being able to give back and being able to just show people and change their minds about things. And uh -huh being able to just express yourself in certain things because theater is also like a family to me. Right. So being able to just express yourself and show what I'm able to do in a certain thing that I love. Okay. So Talon, what, what does um, Upward Bound or TRIO, what does it mean to you? Um, I definitely think it means to me family and support because they have helped me through so much even during hard times, even when they don't need to, they are always there for me to help me through things. Right on. 
Awesome. And you said you're already planning, looking ahead, looking, looking into college. What are your college choices at the moment? Have you already decided? Um, it's between CSU Fort Collins and UNC in Greeley. All right. Why are those two colleges in particular? Um, because thanks to Upward Bound, I was able to go and tour the colleges, and I just fell in love with the campuses, fell, fell in love with just everything about them, being able to understand what they were about and all of that. So being a senior in high school now, already toward the end of your senior year, uh, do you have any advice for current high school students that have yet to discover Upward Bound? Um, definitely if they have the tr chance to sign up because it's definitely the biggest thing that's helped me through high school. Uh, I definitely probably wouldn't have been able to get the grades I've gotten. I've been able to maintain A's and B's. I've been able to just be able to love the program and just through everything. Any particular advisor that you want to give special recognition to? Um, I would say uh, Sean and Violetta because they have helped me through so much. They have been there to talk to me, been there to help me through classes, help me find tutors if I need them for certain classes if they're not able to help me. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We appreciate you and good luck with everything. Thank you. So we're here at the Wells Fargo Center broadcasting live for the Let's Talk Trio podcast. We have various students already coming through and talking about their experiences and their journey. And uh, we have another student coming up. Hello. And your name is? Uh, my name is Julia. Julia, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the Let's Talk Trio podcast. So in the podcast, we're talking about with, with students and their journeys and their experiences. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you um, and your journey in Trio so far? Um, Yes, I would like to start uh, with my background. Um, yeah, absolutely. I am uh, from Russia. And actually, Russia? Yes. Wow. And actually, I moved here as a refugee. Uh huh. And uh, I moved here only five years, five and a half years ago. Wow. And uh, it was obviously a cultural shock for me. Sure. Um, and uh, I went through some high school, some learn uh, English as a second language classes, mm -hmm. and eventually end up in community college of Denver, okay. where I um, uh, where I met with the uh, True Education Opportunity Center. Oh, so EOC. Uh, that's correct. Yes. Right on. And uh, they hired me as for uh, for a front desk position in the beginning. Uh -huh. Yeah. And right now I am a, a head of data assistant for the program. I'm uh, assisting other work studies. That's amazing. And uh, they've been always helping me educationally, yeah. ad, uh, you know, advising uh, professionally. And, uh, you know, I don't think I would ever made out here without, like, we would make it in this, in this country, you know, without mm -hmm. them. And I can say that they inspired me to, you know, to do better, to do good. And yeah. uh, here I am. I got my citizenship by just a few months Congratulations. ago. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, so... Um, I'm, I'm really grateful for my supervisors, for my, for my directors, and uh, all the advisors that are at the program. I feel like they've helped me a lot. I've gone through the Community College of Denver, then transferring over to uh, UC Denver, where I am now studying accounting and finance majors. Wow. And uh, I am actually got accepted into a master's program. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow, that's one great thing after another. Yes, I know. And that all of thanks to the so what does TRIO mean to you as far as like all the help that you've received and all the things that you, what does it mean to you? Uh, TRIO is a su big support uh, for the students because I hear a lot from students that they don't know what their resources are, they don't know what are they doing, and we're always there, we're always making, uh, we're always on tickling events and we're always promoting to our students our services uh, because we want to we help them. And, uh, we want them to succeed in school. Um, we actually had a, about, uh, last year we had about like seven or eight students who received Russia scholarships. Oh wow, they, yeah. They were able to go to the university of their choice. Uh, so I believe it's just inspiring, you know, it's uh, inspiration and it's a backbone of education. Mm -hmm. So with the TRIO programs making such a huge difference for all students and providing that uh, access to education, where do you see trio going from here like do you feel like more programs are needed or do you feel like uh, trio fund trio should just continue growing give us a little perspective on that. Right. Um, I know that there are multiple 
programs were true, you know, and they were mostly created for students who are receiving some federal uh, grants, so they would be able to uh, succeed in their education. And uh, I very support that, and I want the government to continue to support them as well, um, because these programs, like, I believe students would make poor choices and would make poor choices and would lose their grants because there is a limit for the grants. And with uh, with the true programs, they always like keep them on the right track, on the right um, like on the right financial path to continue keeping them in school and then also like giving them not just a, not like educationally well but personally well because I know that a lot of true uh, advisors do everything like like you know, even sometimes apply for um, Medicaid or apply like, for food stamps yeah. and you know some students need that because you know we, we can't survive out there like, with just having a work study job absolutely you know? agreed so, yeah. so if there was a listener right now that was listening to the podcast and they wanted to latch onto a true program or find something to help them uh, what, what would be some advice that you would give them could you repeat that again? Yeah, what would be some advice that you would give to a student that is trying to find a resource or find a way to get connected to college? Uh, so, um, a lot of educational opportunity centers uh, actually are in uh, doing workshops at the high schools. Right They're on. They're trying to uh, help students to get into the school because that's what uh, the EOC is for. It's an access program. So, I believe that all the students should uh, get into the EOC and from there on, you know, they can get into SSS and uh, all of the resources that EOC has and uh, will provide for any students out there. Um, so yeah, be able to just find out one that's right next to you and so they'll be able to help you get into school, get your financial aid ready, get you all set for the school, and then after that they'll send you forward to the program that will help you support, support you throughout the school. Fantastic. Any last words of advice for aspiring professionals uh, that are looking at TRIO programs and say, maybe I want to jump in and help or, or do some, what would be some advice to, to people that want to be a part of the TRIO programs? Yeah, I believe uh, it's very um, rewarding to be part of a TRIO program. Um, even myself, I'm not a professional who works, like I'm not, I don't work as a full-time staff, however, I still see all the students who I try to help with, like, because I've been there, you know, and I'm trying to help them pick the right professor, pick the right grants, you know, find the scholarships, give them all these opportunities that I hear about and I want to give it to them. So it's very rewarding seeing them and their their success too because it was me one, one day because the student who just moved here and didn't know what to do and here I am now, I'm in the master's program and continue succeeding and it's rewarding for my supervisors and for my yeah. advisors. Mm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yeah, we you appreciate you. you. Absolutely. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too. We are broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center in Denver, Colorado, celebrating TRIO Day. We have another student coming up for the podcast. Yes. Hi. Hi. My name is Juan. I'm Jessica Luna. Jessica, nice to meet you. So are you a TRIO staff or student? I am all of the above. All of the above. <laughs> that is amazing. So you're both a staff and a student. Can I you am. Can you tell us a little bit about your experiences with TRIO and, well, first kind of let us know who you are and then t talk about your experience. Sure, sure. Um, so my name is Jessica Luna and I'm a first-generation non-traditional low-income student. Okay. Um, I come from a family background um, in which it wasn't expected to attend college mm -hmm. or, um, and I had my first child at 15 um, wow. in 1995. Uh -huh. uh, between 1995 and 2007, I gave birth to four children um, and dropped out of high school when I had my first one. Uh -huh. um, and really just raised them on welfare um, over in uh, what is, I think they call it Rhino now, but I know it is five points. So, okay. uh, <laughs> and that's where I'm from. So I decided, I had a friend who was actually in prison at the time. He asked me to oh, wow. go down to the community college mm -hmm. to pick up a book. Mm -hmm. Because they could take classes when they got out of college, or out of, when they were released from prison. So um, I went down to the community college with all of my children in tow at the community college of Denver. And that must have been like it hectic. It was horrific. Yeah. Um, I was shaking. I felt so out of place. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't belong here. Let me just get the book and get out. Yeah. Um, and the woman that I encountered, I wish I knew her name, but I, I told her I was there to get the book for my friend. And she said, what about you? And I said, no, 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 I can't go to college. I can't afford college. I didn't even graduate high school. Uh -huh. 
Um, and she asked me to walk with her over to the trio office of the Community College of Denver. Uh -huh. And from there, my life changed completely. Um, I was enrolled within, uh, by that summer semester, which was just a couple uh, months, and they helped me get my GED and run remedial classes starting in math, uh, addition and subtraction math, concurrent with my GED. Um, so again, I started in 2007 at the community college. Uh -huh. um, I was a TRIO SSS alumni from there. Right and then on. I went into CU Denver uh -huh. as a TRIO SS, um, SSS participant. Um, after I graduated with my bachelor's, I completed my master's very quickly. Um, I now work for uh, the University of Colorado Denver TRIO McNair Scholars Program. In Amazing. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way. Into my doctoral program. Um, in my so awesome. <laughs> my dissertation <laughs> is looking at first generation students yeah. and uh, social capital under the rules of professionalism and how to support them. Uh, through undergrad to PhD. Right on. <laughs> you are essentially the embodiment of TRIO, right? Like, the amazing success story that we're hearing now is the variety of success stories that we hear, and you're just, like, one of those unique ones that really stand out because you've had a lot going against you, and you you persisted through all that. How did you keep it going? Uh, it was TRIO. It was not me. Uh, there is, I, I absolutely would have not done this without the program, and I still talk to Emma. Do a shout out to Henry Ornalis. Uh, I still work with and talk to my undergraduate mentor as of this day. I mean, we work in the same office, but I still go to him for coaching. Um, every single time I would cry and feel like I didn't belong, he would remind me, You're here. Yes. I still suffer from some of that imposter syndrome in my doctoral program, mm. and I still go back to Teresa. I still, still, she still connects me to Paul Thayer um, and to all of these people in the community to still support me um, and, and all of the other true students. So. That is amazing, uh, Jessica. That is an amazing story, and wow. So you first of through that. You're in a doctoral program. Yes. Um, what's some advice that you would give to a, a student that might be listening that's thinking about jumping into a doctoral program? You can do it. You yeah. belong there. Uh, there's nothing stopping you except for yourself. Uh, just find a TRIO representative. It doesn't matter which program they're from because they will get you to somebody in a right program that's fit for you. Uh, we want you and we believe in you. Awesome. Jessica, thank you so much for sharing your story on the podcast. That is such an amazing story to tell. Uh, we'd love to sit down with you and do a one-on-one -on -one extensive interview with you at some point. Would Absolutely, that be okay? Yes. Um, I'm going to have you leave inf information with our producer, and we'll follow up again. Awesome. Thank you. Are these t-shirts for sale? Uh, unfortunately, no. Those are oh, okay. those are the only t-shirts we have. Okay, this is just you. kind of promote the podcast. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, really? Oh my gosh. I'll say, Sir, how's it going? How you doing? Nice to meet you. So we are here broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center in Denver, Colorado, near the Capitol. We have. TRIO students and staff sharing their story about going through the TRIO program. Hi, who do we have here? My name is Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Um, I'm a senior in high school. A senior at, at what high school? Um, I go to Paragon. It's a blended learning, so we're half online and half uh, traditional. Oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so what program are you here representing? Um, Upward Bound. Upward Bound. Yeah, I've been in it for four years. For four years? Uh, year, yeah. Really cool. You're already at the tail end of your senior year. You're, it's, it's, you, do you already know what college you want to go to? Well, I was thinking about community college in the bar. Okay, BT. Right on. What, what uh, led to that decision? Why do you want to do physical therapy? Well, it's really been a journey. Because, I mean, I went through so many things that I wanted to really set on. And then, you know, things change. And it's just great to have a workout because they help me figure out what I want to do. And I want to go into physical therapy because I have this passion for all people. I absolutely love the elderly. Uh -huh. And, you know, the life expectancy is starting to go longer. I mean, it is. That, that is true. And I want to be able to help to get them moving and be able to, you know, even levy their you know, living so yeah. they can be older and enjoy their lives and still be, you know, comfortable in their body. So kind of walk us through your origin story of how did you get involved with TRIO? How, was the, how did that even come up? Okay. So my grandma, I was raised by my grandparents. Uh -huh. And I know my grandma will tell me stories about her being an upward bound. Oh, really? And yeah, so she's yeah. an upward bound and uh -huh. a terror. I'm going to get kind of close. So she always told me that she can stay here, but yeah. no, after and one I'm going to be like, school, I missed up and down. <laughs> two days. I'll try not to block it. And they had these papers for upward bound. Uh -huh. so, okay. So I missed the whole thing where our uh, coordinator had went and presented to the class. I wasn't there that day. But I remember the word upward bound. My grandma wanted me to get it. So mm -hmm. I initially remember my. Um, we had to submit an essay, 
And then the essay, I remember cutting something along the lines like, because oh, at the time I wanted to be a lawyer, like, with or without your help, I'm going to end up going to college to be yeah. a lawyer. And that's when I got you were determined. Back. Right away, I got yeah. a call back that, you know, on my birthday, I went in there for the interview, and right there on the spot, they told me I was going to be back. It's amazing. That's all awesome. So now that you've been with the Upward Bound program for four years, what are some skills or things that you've learned that you've picked up that have proved to be uh, valuable to you? Um, knowledge is the key to everything. Really? Being informed about things you want to do, research, just being able to give yourself as much information as possible to do what you want to do because really the sky's the limit as long as you're informed. And time management, you know, they really gave us a lot of skills to be able to help us not only with you know, high school, college, but life and, you know, in general. Being able to, you know, be orderly, to get things done, to, you know, to inform yourself, to get out there, and even if you are scared, you know, like being a minority and uh, coming from, like, you know, living with my grandparents, you feel like you're set up for failure. Mm -hmm. because you already have some things going yeah, against you, right? Yeah, you know, you're not expected to be a first, you're first generation, you're not expected to go to college. Right. But with Upward Bound, it's the, the resources, the guidance that you need. Absolutely. Really. And it's that, you know, that fact in a world where people are waiting for you to fail, they are the ones that want us to succeed. And that's really the, all that matters, is yeah. as long as you have that small group of people. I like how you phrase that, that, you know, there's this little hope, glimmering hope, right, with TRIO programs that when you go to them, they provide you all these resources. Um, and any particular individual that you want to recognize on the podcast that has really helped you? Shout out. <laughs> so she originally, that's the first person I interviewed with. She's the one that told me, she was like, I'm not going to send you a letter. You're perfect for this program. We're going to get you where you need to go. And they've really just, you know, been there this whole time. Even when I had doubts or suffered with, like, anxiety and depression, they were the ones that told me I'm going to be something. I'm going to get there. I'm going to work for it. I that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story in the podcast. We, we appreciate it. Thank you. So we're here broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center in Denver, Colorado, near the Capitol. We have various staff and students sharing their experiences with the TRIO program. Hi, who do we have here? Uh, my name is Jessica Barola. Hi, Jessica. My name is Juan. Nice to meet you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, a little bit about your TRIO background? Sure. Um, I am a first-generation college student. Um, TRIO, <laughs> TRIO was introduced to me by an advisor at Ames in Greeley. Uh -huh. Um, I had kind of given her a little bit of my background. I'm a non-traditional, underrepresented, single parent. So already kind of things going all against you already. Things, yeah. Right? All yeah. these things that go against me. Um, I come from a background of addiction, my whole family, everything. So college was never in, in the cards for me. Uh -huh. It was not something that was expected from me. It was not something that was, I was never shown the path. I see. Um, I actually didn't even graduate from high school. I ended up, wow. um, getting a GED while I was pregnant with my first child at the age of 16. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, college wasn't really the thing for my family. Yeah. Um, TRIO, TRIO for me has been a home on campus. Um, I started during a summer semester, and my first fall semester, the first week of school, I had anxiety, there was too many people, everybody's like right out of high school, I'm old enough to be some of their moms. Um, <laughs> It was really, really, really intense for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have this trio office up on the second floor of our, of our college center. And I, like, snuck in there. And I just sat down for a second. And I had two different advisors, like, help me walk through it. Like, it's okay. I belong. Like, I belong. Yeah. And that is the hugest thing. Yeah. And, you know, I belong there. I deserve to work my butt off and do everything that everybody else has had the chance to do. Yes. And it's been, it's been huge for me. That's awesome. Yeah. So having to hear your story, again, things going against you, but you found your way into the TRIO programs. Yes. Um, getting into education, was that something that was pretty difficult, or did you feel like, hey, this, this looks, out, looks and feels familiar? Um, doing it by myself to begin with, uh -huh. I, was, I was at a loss. Um, registering for classes, I had no idea what I was doing. No idea. Um, I have a TRIO advisor that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, she has helped me walk through every step. Like she's taught me how to register for classes, change my classes. Uh -huh. um, I didn't know you could find reviews on teachers, so oh, that, yeah. was, that was a really big thing. Um, you know, she's been she's been my one key point where, like, if I don't know, 
or if I feel a little odd because I am a non-traditional student and I don't want to be the one to be like, hey, what's D2L? Yeah. I had no idea what it was. I could, I could take 10 minutes sit in her office and she's like, let me show you. Yeah. No judgment, no nothing. So with TRIO, it's made it completely different. Right on. Yeah. So can you tell us a little about the, the program that you're in right now? The, it's uh, the TRIO? SSS classes. TRIO Student Support yep. Service. Okay. Yep. Uh, and what college? Uh, Ames Community College. Right on. And what are you majoring there? What are you hoping to do? Um, I am a psychology major. I am actually an Ames to UNC student also. So I'm a UNC, uh, UNC. I will be doing my bachelor's in human services. Right on. And applying for a master's in clinical therapy. Right on. So it sounds like you're going a therapy route. Uh, why that field? Because I do come from a line of addiction. Um, I am an addict in recovery. I've got three years clean. Congratulations. So that's where college came in. You yeah. Know? Um, I, this is my second full time semester. So um, I want to give back what's given to me. You know, and I can't, I can't be an advisor. <laughs> There's no way I could be an advisor. <laughs> I'm sure you could be. I but probably could, but school's kind of scary for me still. So um, therapy's where it's at. Right on. Uh, that's such an inspirational story that you, you had a child at, 15, at 16 mm -hmm. and then suddenly being thrust into the world of education because you wanted to better yourself and yep. figure out new ways of, of learning, right? Um, can you tell us what TRIO means to you personally? TRIO for me is connection. TRIO for me is hope. Um, and TRIO for me is family. Right on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Again, we're broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center. We're here at uh, Denver, Colorado, celebrating TRIO Day with the various TRIO programs across the great state of Colorado. Uh, it's been such a joy hearing the students uh, talk about their experiences and their, their life, their motivation, and how things uh, work out for them. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's been great so far. Hi, who do we have here? Hi, my name is Nee. Nee, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet my you. name is Juan. Nice yeah. To meet you. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get involved with TRIO? Yes. Uh, so, I'm currently the program coordinator for uh, Student Support Services at Ames Community College. Okay. And I've been in TRIO since I was in high school. I started with wow. Upward Bound. And okay. And then um, after that, I went to SSS. Uh -huh. And then I was like, I need to give back. And so, I decided that I wanted to work for TRIO and there was a book position. So, right on. yeah, I decided that this is it. So you're an, you're an alum and a staff member. Yep. Wow. So yep. how does that feel now that you're giving back to TRIO? You're on the other end now, right? Where you, so, yeah? Yeah. I mean, what, what, what do you enjoy like most about it? Being able to see students succeed. And I yeah. think getting to the point where they can finally realize that I can do this, and I have dreams, and I have hopes, and there are all these people here that support me. And so yeah, it just brings joy to my heart. Awesome. Uh, what led you to this path of wanting to be to give back to the program. There must have been somewhere where you decided like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a shot. For sure, yeah. So when I was in high school, I didn't think about college or anything yet. And someone talked to me about the underground program. And, oh yeah, I, I should apply for it. And so I had many mentors in the underground program. And then once I was done, they helped me with everything I needed in terms of college. Because my parents had no idea. They were like, just go to college. And I'm like, yeah. Mom and Dad, do you know all of like the steps to get to college? I completely relate. Like, yeah. like, parents just toss me like, you should yeah. go to college. I'm like, I don't even know how to get yeah, there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so these like these mentors helped me. And so when I was at the upper bound office, like they have uh, tutoring after school, and so I would get to see the students in college because uh -huh. they share the same office. And so they have tutoring, they have late hours, they have computers, and so it was nice to be able to interact with some of those college students who were in the SSS program. And so once I got to college, I joined the SSS program, and I was able to like meet more mentors. Uh -huh. And then after my journey, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. And so one of my mentors was like, maybe you should go back and do higher ed. Yeah. So I went to get my master's in higher ed. And then he was like, OK, push yourself more. And then I am currently a doctoral student right now. A doctoral student, yeah. so mm -hmm. right on, amazing. Yeah. Uh, what school is that where, where you're um, studying? I'm going to Grand Canyon University right Grand Canyon now. University, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, amazing, and congratulations on every yeah. step that you've taken so far. Um, what would be some advice that you'd give to students that are thinking about joining a TRIO program or maybe even thinking about trying to go to college? Um, I would say do it. Do it? Just do it, yeah. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. Like, you have so many open doors like readily open for you. That's amazing. Yeah, and so, yeah, just do it. Just do it. And, and for those of them who, who have a trepidation, they, they, they feel really nervous about even jumping into college, um, what's something that you would also share with them? I would let them know that I had the same struggles, and I didn't know anything about college, and I didn't know how to get there, but there are people willing to help you. And yeah. So just let those people help. Awesome. That's what they're there for. 
Well, Nate, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I appreciate it. (laughs) Again, we're broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center in Denver, Colorado, near the Capitol. We are capturing student stories and their experiences on the podcast. Uh, Again, for those of you joining us live, we um, thank you so much for your support and your listenership. Um, We will have the audio version later uh, by this weekend, and we'll have it uploaded. So, so many stories so far. Yeah, hi, come on in. My name is Juan. Nice to meet you too. And you are? Julia. Julia. Nice to meet you. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about your story and how you got involved with TRIO programs? Yeah, so um, I grew up in a low-income household um, and, you know, I was, when I went on my tour of CSU, I was the only person there who didn't have a parent with me. Oh, really? Yeah. That must have been scary. It was. It was, I felt very, like, I felt very weird. I felt like, like, I was looking around and, like, all these parents from out of state and everywhere else, but... I was the only person who didn't even have, like, I didn't have a teacher, I didn't have anyone. It was just me by myself. And that's how I felt going into college. And yeah. that's how my first year was. So and you did that completely alone the first year? Oh, yeah, the first year. Oh, wow. All alone. And so then I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not involved in anything. And I was really involved in high school, too, so I couldn't yeah. believe it. And so I ended up, um, a friend, uh, my therapist actually referred me to the AAC, and then a friend mm-hmm. referred me. So how did that happen? Like, that referral? Yeah. How did that happen? So I went along, um, I went in, I was starting doing the therapy because I felt like very, I didn't, I was feeling very, and I wanted to express that and find some resources to help me. Mm-hmm. And my therapist um, expressed to me that I should really check out the um, Academic Advancement Center at Colorado State University, and I did. And it ended, and I went through the interview process, and they've been able to help me so much. Like, I, I felt Amazing. like I became a community. Yeah. I really felt like I was welcome. And that's something like, like from the first time I stepped on, I didn't feel because I was alone. <laughs> yeah. So you're currently third year? Sophomore. Sophomore. Yeah. So second year. And how are things going for you now that that you've been with the trio programs? And are things much better than the first year? Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. It's become so much easier. It's uh, the, I was able to start, I've been participating in clubs. So I've been in my major. We have a supply chain manager club. I went to the meetings for that. I've started, I went to all the meetings for trio. I went to... Um, I have, I went to an internship fair, which was something I wouldn't have done yet last year, and I've ended up with like four internship interviews, and I'm, I'm feeling really good this year, and That's it's, really cool. it's definitely helped me a lot, it was the first step. Awesome, and uh, now that you're heading into your junior and getting closer to your senior year, is your career path opening up, do you feel like you're getting a clearer picture of where you want to be? Oh, absolutely, I've been able to um, find my place at CSU, and I had so many more opportunities, whether it's like with interviews with people and also like I'm studying abroad next semester and that was something that I never thought I could do. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm feeling pretty good. That's good. That's yeah. amazing. And uh, now that you've are experienced the assistance of TRIO, the, all the resources, um, what's kind of next for you as far as, I know you're still in your college career, uh, what are you still exploring and what do you want to do? Yeah, so um, I'm going I'm gonna pick an internship for the summer and I'm going to continue to network. Um, I'm going to continue to be active and do events like coming to the Capitol and representing TRIO for CSU. Right on. Um, and I'm going to be able to go abroad for the first time. I'm going to semester going at abroad. sea. Going abroad, wow. Yeah, All right, so semester at sea. Yeah, and I'm going to be um, gone for a whole half week semester. And that's something yeah. that I never thought I'd be able to do until I started talking to your attention specialist. Yeah. And talking to different counselors. It's really opened up my eyes to like I, even though like I have a disadvantage in this world of being low income, I'm a first gen student. I have all of these things that I never thought I was. I felt like I was in a box, and now I'm finally like, this is my world, and I can take advantage of it. Right on, and with semester at sea, you get to visit various countries. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so well, any country that you're uh, especially excited to visit? Yeah. So we're gonna start in Germany, and then we are going to head over. And uh, we're going to go through South America, Malaysia, Ghana, uh, Vietnam, South wow. Korea. And we are gonna, That's amazing. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, and we're supposed to end in China, but because of the coronavirus oh, yeah. right now, we got moved Correct. to Japan. But, All right. Yeah. Still not a bad stuff. Japan is great. I'm so excited. Yeah. I get to end in Tokyo. So, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, any any last words or imparting to wisdom to our any aspiring trio students or students that are currently in college? Yeah, um, so um, I have a little sister who's in high school right now. She's a senior. And I know what it's like to struggle in high school. And I just want everyone to know that like you do belong in college. Like, you that is so important to know. You need to own it. Like, Absolutely. You belong there. You're paying for this. You, 
deserve every opportunity and you should take it. Well, thank you so much for being on the thank podcast. So I appreciate it. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Again, we're recording live, broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo That's Center near right. the Capitol in Denver, Colorado, celebrating Trio Day. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing good. My name is Juan. You Dixie. Nice yeah, to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. So, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for being on the podcast. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you discovered Trio? Well, my name is Udixi. I am a first generation student. I am the first one in my family to go to college. Amazing. And so I am an only child, so I do not have any siblings. I am the oldest in my cousin, like even my cousins. Oh, even with your cousin, so yeah, you're so with your family and. Yeah. Okay. So I wow. started that route like, by myself. And High five for yeah. old, being the oldest child. <laughs> and Trio, honestly, is what helped me yeah. 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 guide the path, like, made right that path with me. That's amazing. Because, I mean, my parents, they, they didn't go to college. It wasn't they didn't because really she had yeah. to Yeah. I didn't know how to like, do that, so I didn't know how to like, apply to scholarships. But, uh, like, so where to apply to I don't here. know. really helped me just find a place and just how to even write an email to a Right, yeah. Like, that is very, very helpful. So, I think... With true, what you're saying is like it really clears up a lot of pathways that are very foreign for all, for a lot of first generation students. Um, can you tell us about so how did you discover true? How did you get into it? I discovered true. Well, I came from a high school that's like a charter school, and it was like I was like one of the few Latinas in high school. So you know, I used to have like a privilege to have trio or like any other programs like that. And so through a friend, I met, uh, they, they connected me to, to the EOC and he connected me to TRIO. Right on. And um, that's how he, expo he exposed me to it. Wow. And so he was part of the network. What's uh, the, some of the things that you learned through TRIO? I know that it, you got the FAFSA, you were able to figure that out and got a registration, but what are some skills that you feel like you really caught from TRIO? It helped me network, how to, like, network. network and how to like talk to my professors and how to like develop myself professionally. Like Trio really helped me with that. Like, especially when I went to a specialist. Mm -hmm. I don't know, she's she's amazing. Like, I I felt I feel super comfortable with her. Yeah. And yeah. she just helps me yeah. you know, telling me about tricks, how to like for example there's like a new big conference that's based in New York that's about diversity. And like I, I really like that. So yeah. that she like, sent me that like, to develop myself to like eventually like career wise that would really help me that Absolutely. I feel like that's like like help me develop my career and just just building myself as a person and just even making better habits, like study habits or like little workshops that they have and yeah. have self care and like just to take care of yourself. I feel like that's important. So Absolutely. I think I feel like a lot of students kind of undervalue some of the things, right? Like your traditional students that have know what college is about and they had their parents go to college, they undervalue a lot of those skills. But like learning how to speak with a professor, writing an email, learning about time management—that's all super important. Um, so, what is some what what does Trio personally mean to you? For a student that might be struggling to either access college or maybe they're in college and they're trying to figure it out, what would be some advice that you would share with them? I would recommend them to not be afraid. I feel like connect, like, like even to your advisor. Just talk to them, tell them what your insecurities are, and they will recommend you even just little things on how to say things. Yeah. Like what to look up on the internet, like where to find it on the website, like things like that. And just ask. What it is that you want, what it is that you're interested in, like, that'll guide the path to different doors. And uh, that's what you should do. Like, just connect, reach out, and don't close yourself. Like, that's what I did. Like, I closed myself. It's just like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And you just try to get yourself involved. Like, that, that'll definitely help you. So you don't feel like the world is like shutting down. Yeah. So just reach out. Just yeah. make sure to do that. So, what's next for you? Well, I have one more. 
year to graduate from Colorado State University from the University of Notre Dame with my major in ethnic studies and pre law. So I hope to find a job and work with like a nonprofit organization. That would be awesome. That's awesome. Yes, I would like to be an immigration lawyer. Right on. That's what's next. That's what's next. Yes. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We appreciate you and your story. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your time. Absolutely. Take care. Take care. Again, we're broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center at Denver, Colorado, near the Capitol, celebrating Trio Day. We have some students that are... Hey, Sean. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're live. We are live, guys. We upgraded. We upgraded our Podbean package to be live. Hi, who Hi. do we have here? My name is Jane. Jane? Yes. Nice to meet you. Are you so uh, how did you get involved with TRIO and uh, what program do you represent? So I, so a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's yes. back up and do that first. <laughs> That's important. So my name is Jane. Uh, I am a communication studies major with a minor in business administration at Colorado State University. Right on. I am a first generation student and I am the oldest of two siblings. So, I'm sorry, got to give it gotta, up for the oldest. <laughs> got to pave the path for them. Yeah. Um, but the very first time I heard about TRIO, um, I was, I, I graduated from high school and I had no idea what I wanted to do. Or uh -huh. what, where yeah, where to, to go, what to do, yeah. Like, yeah. So I walked into Ings Community College um, and that's kind of where it all began. So I signed up to uh, talk with an advisor just to see like talk about career paths and different degrees and what I wanted to do. So after talking to the advisor, um, I signed up just like every other student yeah. um, to talk with an advisor. And luckily, I met with a trio advisor. A trio advisor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, How did they help you? So she helped me in many ways because uh, she went through the whole, uh, like explained the, all the career paths and like the different degrees. And like she kind of helped me to know what the path I wanted to take because I wasn't sure which career yeah. I wanted to do. Um, and it's normal for for younger students coming out of college, I mean high school, and not knowing what they want to do. So I met with the advisor, and she kind of helped me, and she guided me, and she told me that um, a lot of advisors, like regular advisors that are not part of TRIO don't take the time to actually explain the whole process. Mm -hmm. So um, I was very thankful and I decided to join TRIO. So there I was part of the TRIO SSS. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just got involved and they helped me stay on track throughout college. Yeah. Then after that, um, I graduated from Ames with my associate's degree. Mm -hmm. um, it did take about three years just because- Hey, it, it takes time, it right? It takes time yeah. because um, I was just kind of exploring. I didn't know exactly what I yeah. wanted to do um, until I met with Juan from the EOC. All right. <laughs> so another Juan. Another Juan. Okay. Yes. And he actually helped me and he guided me as well. Um, mm -hmm. And he helped me get a scholarship to attend Colorado State University. Awesome. And that's when I decided to, um, I took a public speaking class and I enjoyed it. And I decided to do a degree in communication studies. Awesome. So I'm doing that. Awesome, and, awesome. Um, after that, I decided, well, the, the path I want to take, my dream job, would be to go on television and then do like a talk show. Yeah. So yeah. what inspired that? What, why do you want to go into television um, and broadcasting? Yeah. So just in general, ever since I was little, I've always liked to be, like, make everybody laugh and be like the center yeah. of attention and just right on. have everybody conversate, conversate with one another. So that's, that's where it all came from. Um, and then the business part of it, as I was younger, I also I did my own garage sales, um, selling my toys and then buying new toys. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Running lemonade stands. So you had your little so business like hustle when you yeah. were younger. All right, yeah, right on. As I, as I was younger, yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah, that's where it all comes from. And then, uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Okay, right on. So what's some advice that you would share with a student that is thinking about going to college? Maybe there's some hesitation there and they, they feel like, Maybe this is not for me, or they're ha yeah, they're just having a lot of hesitation. So I would say uh, to connect with somebody um, in Trio, definitely for sure, because um, Trio does help students um, that are low income and first generation. Um, as first generation, you don't know what you're doing, 
So yeah. in Trio, it's easy to connect and make those connections and help somebody pave the path for you and tell you which way to go. Um, I'd also say just even like talking to your parents, um, if just like asking them for help, even if they don't know, um, it's still a good way to like help them understand where you're coming from Absolutely. so that your parents can support you throughout college because that's the most important thing. Um, family, just like trio and little family, even on a big campus at CSU, um, it's really hard to meet people um, of a population that's 26,000. Yeah. So it's, it's a really big community, but in trio and the EOC office and um, the AAC, they really help feel like a small family um, away from home. Absolutely. So my last question to you would be, uh, what does TRIO mean to you personally? For me, TRIO means family. Um, just because you help, you make connections with um, all, a lot of people. Um, and we're all kind of going through the same thing, um, being first generation, low income, not knowing where to start. And so, um, yeah, that's what I, I say that TRIO means to me. Um, it means family and Amazing. community. And just achieving the dreams. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yes, we you. appreciate you. Thank you. Best of luck with everything. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So we're here broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center near uh, the Capitol in Denver, Colorado. We are capturing students and staff stories about their journeys in TRIO. So we have another student coming up. It looks like from the Upward Bound program at CSU Pueblo. Yeah, come on in. Come on in. Hi, my name is Juan. Hi, Juan. Your name? Isaiah. Isaiah, nice to meet you. Uh, so you're with the Upper Brown Program at Colorado State University in Pueblo. I see that on your shirt. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you and how you got involved in TRIO? Um, I actually found out about the TRIO Upper Brown Program through another kind of extracurricular um, program called Avish. I think it was, um, this was in my middle school, eighth grade year, and it was still a really new program so it wasn't the greatest and I just needed something you know, that would help me more than the Evan program could ever. Okay. When you say help you, what were you looking for help with? Well, the thing is um, for a couple years I was misdiagnosed because uh, I have ADD. I uh -huh. think that focusing on simple tasks is a very big challenge for me and when I was misdiagnosed they put me on something that um, really kind of zoned me out and I didn't get much sympathy or help from anyone there because they just didn't know how to treat me. Mm -hmm. So from there, what other assistance were you looking for for TRIO? Like what, what, what type of uh, skills or things did you pick up being in the TRIO program? Well, for one, um, I actually learned how to submit and write a official um, resume. They also helped me with my FAFSA, setting that up so I know where it all is. And they also help you with um, college write-ups, like essays, talking about yourself. Right on. Because, uh, especially for me, it's always been something hard to do. That's cool. So, can you tell us a little bit about your journey so far? How, how do you like being in the TRIO program, and how you enjoy being at the Capitol? Capitol? Yeah. It's actually you know, my first time being here, but i got to say, it's great being back. Yeah. So, this is not your first time being here? No, actually. We've been here a couple times, and that's all thanks to what our program provides. Right on. And as far as the uh, TRIO programs, I know that uh, you being in an Upper Bound program, it really helps with uh, uh, getting ready for college. Uh, do you feel like it's getting you ready not only for college, but for things that come after college? Well, yeah. Things after college is just basically life and figuring out what you're going to do. So they do give a lot of preparation and a lot of consideration after that. Because um, like um, our director, Gina, she said that... Um, <laughs> Hey, even if college isn't exactly what you're looking for, we'll still help you just set up everything that comes after. Because I mean, life still happens after. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what what are you aspiring to be? So you're currently uh, in high school. Do you have any careers or colleges in mind? I would love to go to CSU Fort Collins. CSU Fort Collins. Yes. All right. Um, what I want to study is biomedical engineering. Biomedical engineering. What what uh, led you? Or what, what what gave you the thought track to that? that specific field? Well, it wasn't always just that specifically. The thing uh -huh. is, um, I've always been interested in, in like arts, sketching up things. So yeah. for a while, I wanted to be an architect just because um, wow. my uncles own an office firm down in um, 
Pablo, mm -hmm. called Cortez Construction, and they taught me how to do, you know, technical drawings, map layouts, buildings, all that. Right on. So I just always had a knack for that, because that's the one outlet where I can focus, and my ADD doesn't really stop me from anything. Yeah. Right on. From there, I went on to other programs, like, um, I think it was a Mesa, where they would teach you how to, you know, work with other people and just build things. Uh, one of the favorite projects I had was um, building a tower without any nails or anything, so just build a paper tower. And just, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That must have been challenging. Yes. And I mean, what we ended up doing was kind of gross, but it worked, and we won the competition. <laughs> Did you put spit in the paper? No, we chewed okay. chewing gum. <laughs> chewing gum? Okay. I don't know. Like, that's... Can't wait if that's worse or not, but hey. Um, what's some advice that you would give to a, a high school student uh, in a similar situation? and they're thinking about going to college, but they're not too sure. Well, um, if you're not too sure about college and you are at a point where you're just like, I'm sick of school, I, I need to get out of here. Because, um, just don't be afraid to ask for help because that's one of the big things that always goes overlooked by a lot of students. Yeah, they, that's some very good advice. They, they never ask for help because they feel like, oh, I'm on my own, I have no support group or something. but. That's what um, the trio for Bound as a whole has been for me. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, Isaiah, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We appreciate you. Yeah. And best of luck with everything. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So we're here at the Wells Fargo Center in Denver, Colorado, near the Capitol. We are getting students to uh, their, capture their stories and share their journey through the trio programs. Uh, we just also learned that the trio programs in the state of Colorado were recently recognized by the state legislature and uh, they have that proclamation. So now we have another student. Hi, my name is Juan. And my name is Taya. When, what? Taya. Taya, nice to meet you. And uh, with who are you and what program are you with? So one more time for the introduction. <laughs> my name is Taya Rosales. I am with Upper Bound in CSU Pueblo. Right on. Um, how did you get involved with the Upper Bound program? How did, you, how did that path come about for you? So I went to an eighth grade night at my high school and I found um, like to sign up, mm -hmm. so I asked some questions like what it is, so I, I, I thought it was interesting so I got involved. Okay. What was more the hook for you, like was it the traveling or was it the fact that more students uh, like yourself would be joining, um, what drew you into the program? Um, I think making new friends too because I did go to like a smaller school and going transferring to a new bigger school for me, I didn't know anyone that also like seemed like it would help me yeah. And also help me get into like college. Right on. When we're talking about college, is that something that you've already thought about, or is it something that you never really thought about before? Well, I thought about it before because my parents they didn't really finish college or go to college. Okay. <laughs> and what college are you, were you thinking about going? I'm thinking about CSUP or uh, University of New Mexico. Oh, University of New Mexico. I'm actually from New Mexico as well, so yeah, <laughs> UNM connection there. Um, what what's uh, appealing about those colleges for you? What do you like? Um, well, I know like CSUP has like a good accounting program and I'm wanting to go into accounting. Accounting? Yeah. That's Our numbers, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What, what draws you about, I mean, some, some people get turned off by numbers, so what, what's, what draws you about that? I feel like math, like there's like different ways you can solve a problem. Uh -huh. So like, <laughs> That's awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about um, what you've learned from TRIO programs? What, what is something that you've picked up or learned? do my FAFSA and how to like write essays mm -hmm. and like edit them. Are you in currently a sophomore or this is your first year? Um, I'm a senior. You're a so senior so you're there toward the end. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Right on. Um, and so have you already been accepted by UNM and the other school that you've applied to? Yes. Congratulations by the way. That's amazing. Um, have you made a decision yet? No. Okay. When, will, when should we expect a decision from you? In a week? Okay, that's awesome. We might have to follow do a follow-up podcast to, just to see if you made a decision and see where you're going. Um, so what's some advice that you would give to a freshman in high school that's thinking about joining the Upper Bound program? Ask for help and start doing your scholarships junior year. <laughs> start doing your scholarships? So you're saying start doing them early. Why early? Because then you'll like, be behind and then you're going to have to be like, rushing into like, doing scholarships and Right on. 
Did, did you get any scholarships or were you awarded any scholarships? Yes, at CSUPU. Oh, so awesome. That's great. Um, so we really enjoyed you having you on the podcast. We, hopefully we can follow up again. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you. Again, we're broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center in Denver, Colorado. We're near the Capitol. We are very excited to be broadcasting student stories and staff stories here at Let's Talk Trio. Hi, my uh, name is Juan. Nice to meet you, I'm Michael. Michael, nice to have you on the podcast. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Michael Marquez. I'm from Pueblo, Colorado. I'm a sophomore in high school currently, okay. and I'm a uh, participant of Upward Bound CSUP. All right. How did you get involved with the Upward Bound program? Uh, my aunt was a uh, alumni from Upward Bound, and when the uh, and when the uh, opportunity came up, she s decided it'd be best for me to join. That's awesome. And when this, when she made the decision for it sounds like she made the decision for you. You're like, you're going to do it one way or the other. <laughs> Did, was there any still draw for you? Did you still feel like, I'll, I'll give it a shot? A little, well, my first summer started off with the summer program. Uh -huh. I was kind of like, oh, I know a few people. I'm going to hang out with them. That's but cool. It eventually expanded out to where I knew most of the people in the uh, right program. On. So what happened during the summer that kind of changed your mind completely about it? Uh, they were really into teamwork and getting to know everybody. And That's it, was, it was perfect. Any activity that uh, comes to mind specifically? Uh, probably the outdoor pursuits. So can, tell me a little bit about that. What, what did that entail? Uh, we were at the uh, ropes course, uh -huh. and uh, we were all we were paired with a bunch of people from different grades. It was just a mixed up group, uh -huh. and we all had to work together and learn each other's you know strengths and weaknesses to right get on. through the process. Awesome. Um, being in the TRIO program, uh, the Upper Bound program specifically, do you have any favorite memories from it? Probably the uh, summer programs. Okay. They're always fun to go Summer through. always sticks out, right? Yeah. Right on. <laughs> During the school year, it's, it's always tutoring and they're always there to help, but summer sticks out because everyone's there, everyone's together. Right on. And now that you've got, you're going through the program, is there any advice that you would share with a student that is thinking about joining the program? Be social. Don't be social. Yeah, don't stay in a corner and stay with a specific group. Be social. Learn everyone's name. Get to know them. Right on. I like that advice that you have for us there, Michael. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what college are you planning to attend and what's the career path for you? Um, I don't have a set college for me to attend to yet. I'm thinking of Wyoming. And oh, Wyoming. Possibly wow. CSUP. All right. And what uh, career path are you possibly thinking about? Um, something in the tech or business. Tech, tech or business. Uh, why those two fields? Tech just it stands out to me, and tech, construction, all those trades, electricity, they just stand out to me. It's always fun to learn, and they're always needed in some way. Awesome. And business, just my uh, aunt went through business. She got her master's in business, so I feel like having someone be like, hey, how do I... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> something to relate to. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, any parting words for our audience that knows that you're in a TRIO program and you know they're listening to your story, any kind of words that you would like to share or any per person that you would like to recognize? I'd always like to recognize the staff of Wilford Bounds, CSUP, Sean, Gina, Violetta, Lisa, and of course, Talent Search, everyone. It's just one big TRIO family. Awesome. Michael, thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you. For Appreciate it. We're here broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center. I have here the proclamation, mm -hmm. the 72nd, am I read? should I read it? Yes. All right, so this is the proclamation issued by the legislature, the House of Representatives by the state of Colorado. It reads, State of Colorado, the House of Representatives convene in the 72nd General Assembly, hereby extend sincere recommendations to TRIO programs. TRIO federal outreach and student services programs have been assisting low-income individuals first-generation college students, and individuals with disabilities and furthering their education over the 40 years. TRIO includes eight programs that provide valuable educational services to Colorado residents looking to progress through the academic pipeline from middle school to post-baccalaureate programs. It also includes a training program for directors and staff of TRIO projects. The members of Colorado House of Representatives extend sincere commendations to TRIO programs and are proud to recognize and thank TRIO program staff for their hard work. We wish those students involved in TRIO programs the best of luck in their honorable endeavors. On request on Representative Denea Esgar, given this 21st of February 2020, State Capitol in Denver. So that is amazing. That's awesome. Sorry, I'm going to 
hold it and be very, very careful. No, you're fine. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so we're here broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center, uh, capturing students at the podcast. We're at Let's Talk Trio. Thank you all, the audience, for listening. We still have more students coming in. Yeah, you're next. Oh, yes. she's kind of like doing a moonwalk. <laughs> Go ahead and have a seat. Hi, <laughs> my name is Juan. Hi, my name is Julie. Julie, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, are you with the CSU Pueblo Upward Bound Program? Yes. Awesome. Nice to have you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the TRIO programs? <laughs> um, well, I'm Julie Estrada, and I'm a Mexican-American. Woo! <laughs> and I grew up learning Spanish. And then, uh, so then you learned Spanish learned... first? Yeah. Okay, same here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I had troubles like learning English mm. when I was stuck in preschool and kindergarten. But then, then you I. You were the quiet student, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I relate to that yeah. completely. So, t uh, you went through kindergarten, pre K kindergarten. That was a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. Um, what resources were you connecting with, or did anybody help you along the way? Um, my parents mostly helped me. They helped me with flashcards and then, like, trying to count money and stuff. And they just try to help me more with, like, my English. Um, and yeah, and then I just kind of clicked with it. Right and on. then instead of just using Spanish in my household, my mom used English as well. Okay, so that's why you started really picking up the language. Yes. Uh, how did you get transitioned over into the Upward Bound program? Oh, well, um, I heard about it through my friends, and they told me to join it. And I wasn't really sure about it, and then I checked more into it, and then I thought it was a really, like, cool opportunity. Because, like, my mom didn't go to shitty, I don't even think she just got her GED, and then... I don't think she finished high school and then my dad he's from Mexico and he like you know over there like you just barely make it to like um, elementary school yeah yeah so it's like really hard because I didn't have like in that experience or that help to get for like financial aid or anything so with the program it really helped me to like you know get the opportunity like have like college tours and stuff and know what financial aid is and how to do scholarships yeah. So it really helped me out, and I have a lot of help now. How many years have you been with the Upper Bound Program? Uh, all four years. All four years. So you're a senior now. Yeah. Uh, heading toward the end of the, your high school career. Do you already know what colleges you're going to go to? Um, I don't. I'm still, like, looking because I just applied to UCCS, so I'm waiting on them to accept me. But I got accepted to UNM. Right. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. And CSU Pueblo. All right. So you already have two decisions from two other colleges. Yeah. When will we expect a decision from you? Well, as soon as I hear from UCCS, uh -huh. um, I think that's like my priority because I don't want to be too far from home gotcha. or like too close, you know. Yeah. So I think UCCS is good, but if I don't, then I plan on going to UNM. Right on. So what does Trio mean to you personally? Trio means to me an opportunity to to grow and just. Get the help like people need. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're I'm okay. Nervous. You're okay. <laughs> it's okay. So she's turning yeah. a little bit red, but it's okay. We're we're she's just sharing her experiences, um, and we're getting really to a personal question about like when we ask students what does trio mean to them. I know it can mean a variety of things, right? Yes. So for you, um, what stands out the most? Oh well, I have a real hard time like opening up and like I'm really shy and stuff and so Upper Bound gave me the opportunity because they take us to college tours and then we join other Upper Bound from like all over like Denver and over there in Colorado Mountain College I know they have Upper Bound as well so it's a good opportunity to like open up and get to know like you know yeah. get out of that little shell. Absolutely it's yeah. good to be social and uh, mm -hmm. out there right. Uh, what's the most important skill that you picked up from Upper Bound? Um, I think more independence because I always counted on that's my awesome. family and like, you know, just yeah. other, that's not me, but Upper Bound gave me the opportunity because like scholarships and all that, like, you know, they're not going to like tell me like, like you got to do this. Like they, like I got to like, you know, learn on myself to yeah. do the scholarships if I want to get to college, get money, like not be in trouble with money and stuff. So yeah. it like really helped me to push me to do things on my own. I just want to point out as we progress through the interview you're getting more and more relaxed like you're like doing this whole <laughs> I'm the guest now and yeah but I do want to ask you one more question as we wrap up so what's next for you after after you graduate after college what what do you see yourself doing well 
I want to be a biologist, so I plan on, um, you know, just getting that rule out. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yeah. about the money, apparently. Yeah. And no, my, but I'm sure that you like the, like the career that you're going into, right? Yeah, and also, like, I want to help out my parents because my dad, he's a roofer and, like, you know, he's from Mexico, so, like, that's all he has. And then my mom, she's she's not working. She's at home, mom. So I just want to make sure, like, when, you know, they can't work anymore or nothing or their hands aren't working, like, you know, they're just yeah. getting elderly. Like, I want to help them, you know. Oh, that's that's The journey they help me with you. Yeah. yeah, I want to give back. That's amazing. And shout out to the hardworking parents out there uh, who yep. support their first generation students. So <laughs> thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank we appreciate you. you. Best of luck with everything. So again, we're broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center in Denver, Colorado, near the Capitol. We are capturing a lot of great stories from our TRIO students uh, here in Colorado. And uh, we read the proclamation. We just uh, heard from a variety of uh, TRIO students from all over, from EOC, Upward Bound, Student Support Services, uh, Talent Search. So we've got a wide breadth of students that are sharing their stories here live at Let's Talk TRIO. So we... I just want to acknowledge really quickly, we, this is our biggest audience. We've had 42 people online. This is the biggest audience we've had for a live <laughs> broadcast. And then we are going to have this broadcast later, uh, the pre-recorded, and uh, we'll make sure we'll edit it and have it s as soon as possible. But Amelia, how are we looking like? Uh, are we still having a lot more students up? Um, we actually have one more student. We got, one more yes. we got two more students. Two more. Awesome. Bring them by. Hi. Hi. My name is Juan. I'm Bailey. Bailey? Yeah. Nice to meet you. So uh, you're with the Upward Bound program at Colorado State University in Pueblo. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you found Upward Bound? Mm, well, I moved down to Pueblo in like the sixth grade uh -huh. because I came from Aurora. Uh -huh. And they visited my middle school and they did a presentation. And like it just sparked my interest because like all the different like opportunities that they're offering and stuff. And, like, I was yeah. like one of the few that actually signed up. What was specific about the program that was offering? Like you said they have a variety of things that they were offering. What specifically what what drew you to the program? The fact that they were like talking about helping with like what we're gonna do with our future. Oh I wow, had, yeah. No clue what I was doing. As a first generation student that can be a very intimidating. Yeah, they're nervous. And situation. so you, having that path almost kinda yeah. being getting that figured out, um, did, and you decided to jump in. Uh, what immediately did you notice about the programs that you really liked? Um, I noticed that there were like a lot of students like me, and that they were like just as confused as I was, so it didn't make me feel like an outsider. Yeah. So like, it's better to like make friendships and stuff like that. Absolutely. Right on. And uh, is are you on your second year with the with the upper grant program, or are you further along? I'm on my fourth year. Your fourth year, so your senior year, you're wrapping up. Uh, how many colleges did you apply to already? I applied to. Four different colleges. Can you yeah. tell us about those colleges? Yeah, I applied to CSUP, um, CU Denver, UCCS, and CMU. All right. And have you made a decision yet on which one you will attend? Um, I'm planning on going to CMU. All right. Right on. And what do you? What's the draw with that program? Why do you want to go there? Well, like they did. They're just like they had this pro the program that I want because I want to be a forensic pathologist. Forensic pathologist. Okay. Yeah, and they have like. They're like the only, they're like the only one in Colorado with the, um, that program, especially in like the conditions that they are, that they have over at Grand Junction. So like they have like the forensics and like the cadaver farms. Oh wow! So you're really into like uh, that type of uh, study. I mean that's yeah. that's amazing. That's wow. Um, when we, you look back at your uh, high school career, what did what does Trio mean for you personally? What has it done for you? Personally, it just gave me like another. Yeah. Yeah, I just like added all of like, my like, all the friendships and like the friendships friendships that I have now. Like I wouldn't have them if it was for the program. I wouldn't be where I am. I yeah. Believe. Okay. And uh, as we wrap up, can you tell us a little bit about um, what the future holds for you? Um, That's a super broad question, but I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just like. I mean, I have stuff planned out for now. Yeah. I guess just like whatever happens, happens. Like, yeah. I already got like the, my my college like planned out for for now, like all the internships and stuff. So. I feel like, like you're the very much the go with the flow type. Yeah. Right on. Um, 
any parting words for students that are thinking about joining Upward Bound or maybe even thinking about going to college? Mm, definitely join Upward Bound. Like, at first, like, yeah, I, th I thought it was cool, but I was still nervous. And, like, it's just opened up so many doors that I wouldn't have had if I had, hadn't joined the program. Right on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We appreciate you, and best of luck with everything that you do. All right, again, we're broadcasting live at the Wells Fargo Center. We're capturing student stories on the podcast. For the listeners, thank you all so much. Again, 43 now, 43 people that are listening live. We appreciate you. Thank you for being part of the podcast. Again, we will have a pre-recorded version uh, later this weekend. Hi. Hi. What's your name? I'm Amanda. Amanda, nice to meet you. you My name is Juan. Uh, welcome to the Let's Talk Trio podcast. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you discovered Trio? Um, well, I never thought I was going to end up in college. Um, I'm 20 now, so I took a couple years off. This is my first semester. This is your first semester in college? Yeah, okay. at Colorado Mountain College. Right on. And it has been nuts. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm sure. It's a it's, culture shock. Well, I'm from Ohio. Uh -huh. I've lived in Kentucky for the past few years, so uh -huh. I just moved across the country. Mm. And... It's been rough. Oh, <laughs> so I'm yeah. Like completely on my own, and you're doing this completely I'm, like no support from yeah. anyone. Wow. Well, my family is not very helpful. I'm sorry uh, to hear that. Both my parents are gone now, so I'm sorry. Um, just kind of going for it. Hey, yeah. And now I have a bunch of loans, but it's fine because it's <laughs> it's gonna be worth it. So, uh, how do you find that motivation, like? There are students who have some support and students have absolutely no support. How are you finding that, that will to continue with, with very little support? I mean, college was something I always thought I wanted to do. I thought I was going to go for elementary education a couple years ago, and then I decided against that. Um, and then a lot's happened. Um, I got really heavy into drugs and alcohol. Mm. Um, now I am a recovering addict and alcoholic. And once I got sober, like, things started to really clear up. Yeah. And I was actually on a trip with my aunt and uncle last year from, like, July up until November. Mm -hmm. And we were just traveling out west, living out of their camper. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It was nuts. That's a nut. Yeah, it's a crazy experience. And so, yeah. I was like, I'm not going to college. I'm not doing it. Yeah. Just anything my family pushed me to do, I was totally against. You would do the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then we were driving... Um, through Glenwood Springs and went out to go to Walmart and we just saw the sign for CMC and I looked it up online to see what it was and I saw the outdoor education program uh -huh. and I was like I just want to do it yeah and yeah. we ended up touring the school and when I went to the uh, Spring Valley campus I talked to Lori Corwin and she told me about it and I was like well I'm probably not gonna do that yeah. and my uncle was like really pushing for it so I was like, okay, I'll look into it. And then I met with Kirsten, the advisor there. And now I meet with her every week, and she just helps me with scheduling. Yeah. Because that's, that's, like, my biggest issue right now. Just I'm doing so much between student activities and just different clubs. And I'm in a 12-step program, so just trying to manage my meetings with that and wow. homework and classes. You are balancing a lot. <laughs> it's yeah. so much, and I don't know how I'm doing it. I would you are doing great, by the Kirsten. way. You're doing great. <laughs> Like, she's so helpful. Yeah. Like, she literally just helps me write down everything in my planner every week. That's like cool. Block out time for scheduling. Yeah. Or for, a home, for scheduling. For homework. Well, even you have to schedule to schedule. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and block out time for homework and when I'm going to study. And she keeps pushing me, like, not to do so much within the next month because yeah. I'm about to start a really hard class. That can be overwhelming if you do too much. I'm first yeah. responder. Yeah. So that's going to be a lot. Yeah. And I'm terrified, but there's just so much extra support at CMC, yeah. and I'm so happy I picked that spot. Yeah, so with the TRIO programs, how did that how did it happen? I know you said earlier that there was an outdoors program. Uh, the TRIO program, how did you transition into it? Well, I'm majoring in outdoor education right now. I'm going to get my, my associates in that, and then um, after that, I'm not sure. But I during orientation, there was a really small group of us, so like... We talked a lot. We were able to talk one-on-one -on -one with like all the counselors and advisors. And um, I talked to Kirsten, and I heard about it a little bit more. And then I ended up talking to one of the counselors, and she kind of pushed me to do it. Yeah. yeah. So I did it, and I'm really happy I did because now I get extra math tutoring. There's already free math tutoring, but now I get extra help with that. 
and just scheduling and she talked me into meeting with the disabilities coordinator and now I get like extra testing time. That's awesome. And yeah. I get to do it in That's a separate good. room, especially with math that really helps me. That's so awesome. I get so distracted. And so it's just really cool. Yeah. Like and just seeing today like how many people it really impacts. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So can you tell us a little bit about what comes what comes next for you? I know that you're still early in your college career. You have an idea of where you want to be. Can you tell us a little bit of what's next for um, you? I'm not sure if I'm going to transfer to a four-year or not, um, but what I want to eventually end up doing is working in wilderness therapy programs, and that's why I chose the outdoor education, because I want to work with teens and young adults in recovery and try to help people make better choices with their life and try to get off the path that I did. Yeah. So what would be some advice that you would give to students that are facing a similar situation? Um, there is help out there. And you just have to be able to ask for it. The biggest thing that I've learned is it's okay to not know the answer and to be able to ask for help. Yeah. I do it all the time. Every day I'm like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> right. Like I've literally walked into Kirsten's office and been like, I don't know what's happening. Like, please explain this to me. So asking for help is vital. Yes. Awesome. And just being able to accept it. Because that was really hard for me. Yeah. And it's kind of, with the opportunities that have been given with TRIO, it's kind of been easier to ask for help with that. Because if I wouldn't have told her I was struggling with reading or math, I wouldn't have met with the disabilities coordinator. I wouldn't have that extra right. testing time. Right. And there's just so many examples of that. And it's really cool to, like look back on it now yeah <laughs> to reflect on it right like to, yeah. to see how much progress you've made because like when That's i'm amazing. doing it like i don't think about it like like i'm thinking about it but like i'm not thinking about the, the effect that it's gonna have yeah so now i get to look back on that and it's just really cool awesome so any any other last things that you would want to share with the audience that's listening um just if you think you have a dream follow it even if it seems impossible because right now Everything seems impossible, but I'm somehow managing it and managing everything that's happening. And it's crazy and it's so hard, but it's worth it. Awesome. I've never been this happy. So Glad that you're in a great position and in a great spot that you're doing so much. Thank and you. congratulations on everything and Thank best you. wishes on everything that you do. Thank you so much. We're out here at the Wells Fargo Center in Denver, Colorado, near the Capitol. Uh, and we have, who do we have on the podcast? I'm Ellen. Ellen, nice yes. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So how did you, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the TRIO programs. Okay, um, Ellen, I'm an immigrant from Ghana. From Ghana? I'm a permanent resident here. Awesome. And I started school in 20, summer 2019. Oh, you started in sc school summer 2019. Yes. So you're still a student. Yes. In right Kansas on. College of Ara. Uh, so... Uh, starting off in your college career, how, how did you get involved with TRIO? How did you hear about it? Okay, uh, when I started school, um, a friend introduced me to TRIO. She told me that TRIO is more like for diverse people, people uh -huh. of diversity from different countries. Uh -huh. And I joined TRIO because I wanted to feel belonged, you know? Yeah. So that's why I joined TRIO. Okay, so you were looking for community. What did you find with TRIO? It's amazing. Yeah? Yes, I get to meet so many people. Uh -huh. The advisors are very good. You feel so welcome. You feel so comfortable, and you get to go to so many places. Like just like today, visiting the capital is my first time going there to know how the place is. So this is your first time coming to the capital. No, what? I've been coming to downtown, seeing uh -huh. the building, but I've never entered the building. Oh, so now. entering the building—that's yes. your wow. Yeah, that must have been an experience. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a nice experience. What do you like most so far about this uh, event? So far, at least I get to see how they make rules and pass bills for the states. That's important to see. And it was so interesting how they do it. Mm -hmm. You know, how we imagine it to be was how it was done over there. And it's a nice experience. Awesome. Yeah. And what trio program are you with currently? I'm with a traditional. Yeah. Okay. And being with the upper, with the, um, Trio program. Uh, what have you learned? What's some skills that you've picked up? Okay. Um, so far, I actually can't say much about that, but the only thing I, can, I know is um, I'm able to communicate well with people. 
at first when I came here, it mm -hmm. was so difficult because I felt like talking to somebody from a different perspective, like they'll look down on you, they will not even smile to you when you talk to them. But joining Trio has given me the courage to approach people, just talk to them, especially when we go for Trio programs. That's amazing. I'm able to uh, mingle with other people and then be friends with them, which yeah. is very, very important to me. What does TRIO mean to you personally? What does it mean to you? TRIO, I would say, is more like a, a guideline for me to achieve my career, what I want to do in life. Mm -hmm. Because with the advices, they kind of advise you, take you through your pathways to know which one is better for you. Especially when you're even doing well in classes, when you're not doing well, they want to know what they need to help you to uh, do better with your classes. And then they can help you so to know that this will help you, but this thing will help you. So if you can move to this direction, and so far this been, they have been very, very helpful. In Amazing. So what is um, coming up for you? What careers are you looking at to, um, to be in? I'm trying to get into the nursing program. That's amazing. So I've already started with my IMP application, and hopefully I get accepted in the start school. That's cool. Yeah. Very awesome. Um, what would some advice that you would give to someone that's facing similar situations that you are? I would just tell them, if you are in school like me, just join TRIO. Just join TRIO? Yeah, because with TRIO... But what if I'm a shy student and I'm like, I don't want to join? Yeah. That looks like too much. You have to. Oh, I have to? Yeah, I will just tell you, join TRIO. Because with TRIO, you belong, you know? Right on. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. And best of luck with everything that you do. Did you sign an angle? Uh, the yeah. Okay. They both did? Mm -hmm. Hi. I don't yet. I'm just no, no, not yet? Okay, never mind. So we'll take a brief break. Just kidding. Uh, my name is Juan. I'm Renny. Renny? Renny? Yeah, you nice can to call meet me you. Renee. That's fine. Renee, okay. Um, nice to meet you. Welcome to the Let's Talk Trio podcast. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you joined Trio? Oh, my name is Renny Tolkham and how I joined Trio and I moved here from Houston, Texas mm -hmm. two years ago and I was living here pretty much me and my kids and my partner. Mm -hmm. And I started community college in Aurora uh, in summer uh -huh. 2019 also and then, I mean how how I come to Trio is my my instructors. There was like TRIO is like a good program that helps with diversity and student is willing to learn and like they have like a lot of opportunity uh -huh. that if there is something that I want to learn, I I just had to go there and sign up and I, I never did in summer I, because I was just like so busy with like the schedules and everything. So I do go and talk to the advisor about it and then she was like, yeah, you just take some paper and think about it and come back when you feel like you're ready to sign up and we can help you. So yeah, I take it, I go home for a few weeks and then I come back and I meet with her. I was like, yeah, I think it's something that I wanted to do. So yeah, yeah I just sign up. And since then, I my first event was when like we just go out with family and everything they have. Uh, and she asked me, I can also bring my kids. Oh wow, they so could, they invited the family too. Yeah, they invited the family. So they was yeah. like, yeah, you can bring your kids and they can play. And I was like, okay. That's awesome. Yeah, that's how it started, and yeah, here I am. What do you like most about TRIO? What do you like about it? I mean, the experience. The experience? Yeah, like you get to meet with a lot of people, and people that you're scared of uh, getting close to, like people that you think like they are so different from you, and like the diversity, and people that like they don't care what you're looking like, mm, or where yeah. you come from, yeah. or you just like, it's it's like family, like trio, when you are there, you are there. You just, nobody, you know, like discriminate you, like your race or anything. So I think like, I think trio is, I think is where I needed to be most part because I mean, when I started and somewhere, I was never anywhere. So I just started like last semester too, I think, at the start of last semester. Mm -hmm. And 
I think I have fun because I mean I we go to different places and visit and and see a lot of stuff. And I think it's good. It's really beautiful to be in the trio with the people. So yeah. Awesome. And what would you say that you've learned from trio program? Being in the trio program, what have you learned? What I learned. <laughs> I thought you were ready. Just kidding. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready. I'm just trying because, I mean, I learned oh, so a lot It's a deep stuff. question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at this take a reflection, you have, like, sit Absolutely. Yeah, so, Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. Yeah, I mean, I learn a lot because, I mean, I usually go there if you need help with trio. I, mm-hmm. I usually go there for study time and stuff so that, you know, they can help me with my homework and help me with my my grammar and the spelling and stuff I think it's, it's great program that yeah. I learned a lot because before that I mean I don't know what I was doing yeah. they helped me with my final paper I think I learned a lot about the new things that I never come across it. and I don't know I, I learned a lot a lot a lot of stuff in there with, with the people I learned like how the people can be friendly and they don't care um, how you think or even if you don't know what you are doing they still like make you know that you can do this they make you believe that you can and I, I begin to learn that because I used to think that I'm, I'm a failure I mean I was mm-hmm. like ah, I can't do this and I learned that and I learned that through trio that it doesn't matter where you come from that you can still pick up and you can still learn and you can still Absolutely. do something so I think yeah trio is great yeah <laughs> So what's yeah? So what's next for you? As far as you, you're in this college path, what's next for you after you graduate? What's what's going to be your career? Where you feel that you want to be in? I mean, right now I'm studying psychology uh-huh. degree. I wanted to do social worker. Okay. But why then, social work? I don't know. I like I like I really like helping people and helping moms and family mm-hmm. and. I mean, when I was growing, I was like, yeah, I wanted to be, I wanted to do a nursing, I wanted to be a doctor, but then I figured out that it does not how you help people. There's a lot of different ways to help Definitely. people than being something that you know you're not good at it. Like, I don't like blood, and I can't deal with nursing right. or a doctor if you don't like blood. If you don't like blood, you shouldn't yeah. be a surgeon, right? <laughs> yeah, so I I was like, okay, I, I changed my degree a lot when I, I started. I first started to... Yeah. Like, How many times did you change it? I don't know, like about four or five times. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I think I just wanted to, like, learn more, uh, you know, helping family and stuff. So, yeah, right now I'm studying psychology, but yeah. I kind of, like, find another interest. <laughs> yeah. That last semester I was in a play, Metamorphosis, and I figured that I like myself up stage and I was like what oh, I wanted to get into <laughs> I was like, oh, I, was like how come <laughs> I was like how come a person have a lot of interest like how can yeah. a person have so much passion but I'm still like I still have my passion to study psychology Absolutely. and then I was like yeah I wanted to um, get into theater and I was talking to my advisor but yesterday when the Denver event opened and I went there too to the event for like 15 minutes and I talked to most of the people and I don't need to like double major in theater because that's what I'm trying to do and I can go to um, university for I mean the Denver mm-hmm. and I can just start minor with theme yeah. and I can do that I just figured that out yesterday I was like yeah I don't need to double major because I'm on CCA for almost a year now and I don't want to stay there like four years I mean. right. so I was thinking that because I'm going to meet with my advisor too next week and Maybe I would just tell him, like, hey, I think I would just go to Denver and maybe just do the minor filming thing, and I think I will see how that goes. Yeah. But I really love theater, too, yeah. and I know you can call me crazy, but <laughs> I don't know how can somebody no, can love two crazy. things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how somebody loves two things. And you can love like, several things, right? Like, you can, you can love trio, still love your family, still love the degree, still love yeah. the field and the career that you're going to. Yeah, I think I really love myself more, too, Absolutely. up there on stage. And I was like, oh, yeah, I need to feel that more confidence and feel like the, like the experience I wanted to experience that with my own self. Right on. 
because when I was in high school, I come here before I went to high school, and back then I don't know what I was doing because I was in an uh, um, choir mm -hmm. at school, like music, and we used to have this performance, but I that never kicked in my head. Mm -hmm. Like I never know what I was doing until like now I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. this is where I, I really do what I to do. So okay. So what's some advice that you would give to a student that's thinking about jumping into college? <sighs> college is hard. <laughs> it can be, yeah. Is, yeah, college is hard, but but one thing I come to college is like where I come from, mm -hmm. there is not a lot of people get the opportunity to go to school. and That's a good perspective. Yeah, so uh, like especially like international students, we come here for a purpose, that's what I say to myself. I was like, I come here, I have kids when I was young, and mm -hmm. I mean, I have two kids, and it's like, it's challenging, and Absolutely. school, and then work, and then you have to, I think like, they need to know if they are ready for it. Like, are you ready for college? Like, you just don't jump in there, because you know, you will have the, um, the loans there to pay, if you feel like you are not ready, but it just like, like the idea of going to college because I come across a lot of people who are like I don't know what I'm doing I'm just taking some general classes but I don't know what I want to study and they are taking loans for it yeah. and I was like no I, I don't think it's uh, one one advice I will give them if you don't know what you are going for it don't go unless so you try figure to f figure out, out yeah. a good path before yeah, like, you go in. yeah like figure out what you want because I mean you can take a lot of classes and you take all of these loans and those classes you are taking, some of them end up not helping you because it's not what you want to do. That's true. So I, I think you have to go when you're ready and when you feel like, yes, I wanted to go and this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I put my mind in psychology. I was like, this is what I, I want to do. I mean, I think this is my calling. I, and even if I take a loan right now, I know that this is what I want to do. So I can figure out how to deal with that. And I think I'm... I'm fine. It's, it is challenging to have two young kids and waking up in the morning, drop them at daycare, then try to get to school and True. try to get homework done. And then you are on the play. You have all this rehearsal schedule that you had to be there. And then, but I, I think one thing that keeps me going is because it's my passion. Mm -hmm. So I keep on going, but I will not say the same thing to someone if you feel like you are not ready to go don't go because yeah. it was hard and somewhere I cry I was like I feel like I'm not ready for college I feel like I'm not ready but then I also figured out that Community College of Aurora is a place for me to be and that no matter the challenges that I go through I mm -hmm. can overcome that so I, that's important yeah so I I begin to like um, adjust everything I figured out with my work schedule, my school classes, and still doing work study after classes. Last semester, I was like crazy. I was like, yeah. it's me. It's what I want to do. So yeah. if you had to sacrifice two hours of my sleep to get to that thing, then yeah, I will do it. So. Right on. <laughs> well, Renee, thank you so much for being yeah. on the podcast. We appreciate you. Yeah, Best of luck too. with everything. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So, welcome, welcome to the Let's Talk Trio podcast, both of you. Thank you. I appreciate you. you being here. Um, can we have some introductions? Who are we talking to? I'm Jamie Bia with um, Jamie? EOC University. All right. Are you a student or a staff? Both. So, so I, student and staff. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I attend MSU currently. I'm in my last semester, and I'm staffish. I'm an intern for EOC. So, so staffish. Yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. I like that. <laughs> right. And? Uh, my name is Naveed Nakui. Uh, I'm a student at UC Denver, and uh, I also work for TU EOC at CCD. Right on. Well, thank you all for, for being part of the podcast. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm in the middle of eating. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We appreciate you both. So, being both a TRIO student and a staff member, you must have had a really good experience like on that end of being a student and then transitioning over to part staff. Can you awesome. tell us a little bit yeah. about your experiences? Uh, both of them. In either well, one. Wants to, whoever wants to go. Right. Uh, when I come to America five years ago, mm -hmm. uh, I knew three words: yes, no, and Coca-Cola. That was <laughs> those are that's important. Right. That's how you navigate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so I had no idea 
how to apply for a school, financial aid and stuff. So uh, I guess the Trio office where, was where uh, I found all the information and resources mm. that helped me uh, with uh, all the stuff that I need to know about. Um, and after that, when I started to work with them, <coughs> uh, it just kept going better and better. Uh, I uh, won the Rusher Scholarship. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Uh, That's huge. Uh, it is a, I'm grateful for that. Uh, I won the President Service Award. Uh, I got uh, another scholarship by Theta Kappa. Um, and I guess uh, all this stuff happened because I was part of two years. And if I didn't know about this stuff, probably I was not going to apply for uh, Weisher and stuff. We did some uh, uh, workshops, mm -hmm. uh, which was really helpful for me. Uh, that's why I love Trio, and I guess uh, everybody should apply for being part of Trio. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my experience, I first started off at City Community College student, mm -hmm. um, so I was at CC person that helped me with my FAFSA is someone that I work with now. Oh, really? Um, yeah, so now that I'm in like my senior year, at the very end of it, I've kind of been able to look back and think um, that this program has been able to help me, and um, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I am at, but I also get to take that and start being able to help students, because I'm now in that role where I can give back everything that was kind of given to me, and all the resources and advice, and um, really just the positive environment that TRIO creates for students, I think it's always very uplifting, it's very motivational, and it continues throughout, and I think um, it, the way that it kind of works is, um, I've been so impacted by it that I want to give back, and I think it's the same with students that are a part of it. So what has been the most impactful thing for you being in TRIO? Like, what, what's the thing that really made the difference? I would say 100% the support. Um, I'm also a first generation student, uh, so working with people that understand what my barriers are and have worked with students to overcome their barriers that are Oh, Dave is using the restroom a little quick. Sorry. <laughs> we have some background. Sorry. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to leave that out yeah. for the show. But that's really impactful, the, the community, forming community um, and having that support. What about for you? Uh, well, I mean, uh, now the people I work with at Trio are my best friends, and I get all the supports I need from them. I love them. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. But, but uh, I'm telling you guys, you you gotta apply for Trio. Trio is the best thing that happened to me since I'm in college. Uh, all the support, all the information you need, all the resources, you can find them at Trio. If you're a first generation, low income student, go for it. Thank you. Yeah. So for you two, um, Jamie, you said you're an intern right now. Do you eventually want to work for a TRIO program? And that go that question goes for both of you. Yeah, of course. Um, I've been looking into my options and have been like planning ahead since I do graduate very shortly. Um, but I think I was able to really find out that this is where I wanted to be just by being a part of it and seeing it work itself. So I had really... That's my hope, is to just stay working with this population and working with the students and working with the same um, people that have really uplifted me and being able to do that for other students. Okay. Uh, right now I'm trying to take the DAT test and get into the dental school. But oh, dental school. Yeah. Okay. But I would love to work for TEO someday. I don't know how, but I love the place. I love the workplace. Uh, I love the people and everything about it. So I hope someday I can be able to help the students like me. I think it's important to have people, both of you, right, to potentially mentor others that are coming up. So what would be some advice that you would share with potential TRIO students or potential college students? Ask questions. Ask, ask questions? questions. Um, there's always someone there and there's always a resource there to help you at, at times where it might feel like maybe you're the only person in that situation or something, a barrier that's so hard to overcome within the college system there almost always is someone there yeah. to help them get past that. So ask as many questions as you need to. Don't Important. feel don't feel intimidated. Everyone is like in the same bowl. Everyone doesn't really know what they're doing with their lives, even though we pretend True. to True. Um, I think most of us yeah. are faking it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, and I think any good advisor, any person in that advising role can give that to students and tell them like don't give up. Um, there will be challenges 
There will be opportunity, yeah, yeah, those will be these, right. those um, times. But to just keep going and set your mind to a goal and continue to pursue it and Fantastic. asking help from other people to reach that goal is not hard. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Um, yeah, Jamie said all of it. But uh, I would say just know about your college because there are so many offices at your college or campus that you don't know about them. Just ask them how they can help you and use all the potential that you can get help for, from them. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So use all the help you need. That's fantastic. Involvement is super important. Right. Yeah. Why is involvement so important? They always, they always tell us the more that you're on campus, the higher percentages of you being successful, the higher chances of you getting better grades. Yeah, studies have shown that. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like kind of when people say that, it's just like, yeah, all right, but I mean, I also got, I received the red shirt as well. Congratulations. But so did mm -hmm. three other people in their office. Yeah, yeah. just so in their office. So I think that just kind of shows a lot of how much was put into the passion of, like, helping us and helping the students. And we even, like, I did, like, mock interviews for them. Like, we all bounced off of each other's ideas, and this all happened on campus. And even, I mean, we could have taken it and done it somewhere else, but the relationship and that support was built on campus, and we kind of... Um, we kind of just took how our advisors were with us and did it with each other. Like we, we were able to work with each other the same way that they would advise us. So um, involvement is really important because if you're around people who are kind of doing the same things as you, and on top of that, you have someone that will give you, kind of lead you in the right directions that will be there for support and mentor you. So I'm going to ask you a pretty tough question. <laughs> What does success look like to you, now being in TRIO and now coming on the other end of being a professional? What does success mean to you? Go for it. Success is different for every single person. It can even be like, I could have a successful day because I got out of bed today. So I, I really think that it is on a different level for each person um, as far as what they think is successful for them. Um, but I guess for me, my successful or what I think is, uh, is being able to continue to learn and grow and that's kind of where I would put success is I'm in a position where I'm able, I'm doing what I love, I am enjoying it, and I'm learning and I'm growing, and I think that's successful with me. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my family made a huge sacrifice by coming to America uh, to let me have a better education and stuff. So success to me is when I can repay my parents uh, and be what they want, actually be proud of me. So that's what I, that's how I define success. I think by that definition, they're already proud of you, right? Because you've gone so far. I think they are. Yeah. They are. <laughs> they are, right? <laughs> um, before we wrap up, we just wanted to ask one more question. Is um, As far as uh, professionals that are looking into the trio world, or maybe even looking beyond that, uh, what's some advice that you would give them about persisting and sticking with it? So how, how did you all manage it? Okay, so to continue. Yeah, because it's very easy to just give up. I, I think always just looking at it as the bigger picture. Um, kind of looking at everything out of, out of bird's eye view. And even though something might be discouraging or you might not want to continue because of a bad experience, just always kind of remember the long end or your long term goal and looking at life as kind of like a bird's eye view and the whole, the whole big picture of everything. Absolutely. Um, and if if someone were to be stuck or not know how to continue within their career, um, I would... <laughs> Sorry, I'm not asking you all to no, be I'm career like counselors, but... Yeah. Yeah. We'll edit this part out later. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I gotta be honest, I didn't get the question. So. <laughs> so like what would be some advice for a person that like if on their on their tail end of their college career and they're now looking into careers, what would be something oh, that you would I'm like sorry. how would you the coach them? I yeah. The oh, no, no, yeah, sorry, I probably framed it weird. A, like, I will go back and edit this. Career. Okay. So <laughs> for someone that's getting out of college into their career. Yep. Okay, you answer it no, first. no, no. You, you just <laughs> made a correction. Going out, going into it, not knowing, or yeah, if they 
if they're tr looking for that internship or that job, like how, how, what was the path and steps that you took to get to where you, where you are now? How would you, what would you recommend to a student that's kind of wants to follow a similar path? Yeah. Um, As I'm being distracted with food. <laughs> I would definitely say um, going and like viewing the environments of something that you're interested in. So uh, even like sitting down and talking to people that are already in that position, that's a good way of understanding. Like you could ask someone who is in the position you're thinking of, what is a normal day like for you? What does a day look like for you? What are your responsibilities? Um, and how did you get there? I feel like a lot of it is kind of the research on the students and sure. kind of it's a lot of self-discovery and a lot of them kind of finding out what interests them, but there are people that are will be able to talk to those students and give them better advice. And, um, it's kind of more of a direct line of finding out what it is that they want. Yeah. Anyway. Um, well, uh, if somebody asked me about some advice, uh, I would say that just fight for what you want. Uh, because I fought a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm still struggling with my English. Uh, uh, Doesn't sound like it. Like you yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, think. Like uh, uh, I have a lot of problems with that. Uh, I'm struggling with them, but I just don't want to let it go. You know, this is my Absolutely. lifetime opportunity. Uh, I just keep fighting until I get what I want. That's really good advice. It's just. Keep fighting, mm -hmm. right? Keep staying in the fight. Yeah, don't get disappointed. Yeah. Well, thank you ver both very much for being on the podcast. Thank we you. appreciate you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll have to do a follow up and do a one on one with both of you. Great. So yeah. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, again, you're listening to Let's Talk Trio broadcasting live from the Wells Fargo Center near the Capitol in Denver, Colorado. We're here celebrating Trio Day with the various programs across the state, and we're just very grateful to be here. Uh, and we appreciate, uh, one, the, the Colorado chapter of Aspire who invited us to be here and to do the podcast. Um, and this is our first time doing a live podcast uh, for Trio Day. Uh, for those of you joining us, thank you for listening. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the podcast now, and we will have uh, opportunity for those who still want to share their story on a podcast later. So uh, to the audience, thank you much uh, for listening. We do have a major announcement. If our goal this year is to try to attend the Council for Opportunity and Education's annual conference. Right now, our podcast is a very small team. We don't get a, a lot of money at all. We don't make any money. We are non-monetized. Being a non-monetized podcast means that we cover all of the costs. So fuel to come up here and the monthly subscription costs to keep our podcast alive. So what we're asking the community, we are on Patreon. If you want to sponsor us, there's different levels and tiers. Uh, you can uh, sponsor a dollar for a casual listener for one dollar a month, up to a hundred dollars a month for those who own a business and would like to be underwriters for our, our podcast. So that is our exciting announcement. Our goal again is to attend the COE conference in September. We'd love to go over there and podcast. So again, uh, you can go to our Patreon page for Let's Talk Trio and donate any dollar amount that you want. If you fall under one of those tiers, you'll either get to be able to record an intro for us or uh, we'll give you a shout out on the podcast, a thank you card, uh, or, or unlimited underwritings if you're a business. So again, thank you to our audience. Thank you very much for listening. We were very fortunate to be invited to the Trio Day event in Denver, Colorado, near the Capitol. We were, again, very lucky to be part of the, the event as a whole. So we want to uh, say thank you to Stephanie Moya, uh, to Faith, to all the program directors that came out to the, to the Trio Day uh, to celebrate. And uh, again, we were just very fortunate to be there. Uh, I do want to uh, give a special shout out to Carla for saving the podcast. So the Wells Fargo Center had Wi-Fi, but it was password protected for everything. Thinking on the spot, um, Amelia and I just like, you know what, let's put it on a hotspot on the phone and that'll be great. The only thing I, I uh, didn't realize was my phone was already at 45%. So uh, by that time, uh, it was already, it was kind of close to dying. And when you put on hotspot, the battery just drains that much faster. So um, Carla, uh, who is with the uh, Upward Bound program at Colorado State University, souped in, gave us, uh, let, her, let us borrow uh, her charger 
and we were able to save the podcast uh, to, so we could be able to broadcast live uh, from Wells Fargo Center. I also wanted to give a special shout out to, again, our sponsor, uh, Brian Gray. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. If you want to support our podcast, you can go to our Patreon page, look for Let's Talk Trio, and donate any dollar amount. It can be a one-time or you can do a monthly subscription, whatever you'd like. There are different tiers for each sponsorship level. And again, this would really help us not only with the traveling, but uh, to really setting our goals here to go to the Council for Opportunity and Education's annual conference in September. That is our big goal right now. Now, things in between, we'd love to upgrade our software, love to upgrade our equipment. The, the ability to travel to Wyoming or to uh, various parts of Colorado, uh, New Mexico, uh, and even beyond that, to go to other states and cities and uh, be able to sit down and have a conversation with the TRIO programs over there. This program was produced and overseen by Emilia Castaneda, sound engineer John Russell, executive producer and host Juan Rivas, with honorary members Roderick Chambers, Scott Kendall, and Tony Ho. Thank you all very much for listening. We'll catch you on the next episode.